Hey everyone, today we're going to continue the process of 3D modeling car and vehicle interiors. This is part of a series where I'll be covering interior car modeling from beginning to end. Today's video focuses on refining and adding details to the rear hatch and starting the roll cage. This tutorial series is targeted to beginner to advanced skill levels in 3D modeling. Maya 2022.3 will be used for this tutorial, but the workflows can be applied to any 3D software as well as any version of Maya. So with that, let's get right into it. Alright, so here we are in Maya and you can start to see the progress that's been made since the last video. You can see that we've started to add a lot more detail to the interior rear hatch of the vehicle. And you can see that we have these broken out as separate modular components, which is going to be a big theme for today's video and future videos. So if I head over to my pure ref board, you can see that I have this area focused here for, you know, the rear hatch and interior components of the Datsun 240Z Resto Mod. And we're going to focus on these elements and the roll cage. I have the version of, you know, before adding in all this detail here. So we can take a look at what that looked like before. And I can actually move this over and kind of compare the difference, right? So you can see this is the version and the block out that we had of the interior and the rear hatch area and this is where we ended up all right now all of these are being created as high poly sub d models and then we can worry about creating kind of a low poly more optimized version for gaming later all right so let's start the process the way that i'll be focusing on today's video is i will show the high level and key workflows and then i'll follow up with the time lapse of how i created this entire rear hatch area as well as kind of blocking in the the roll cage here so if i bring back again the part one version you can see what we have here and i'll translate this back to the original position and we'll start with kind of the suspension area and wheel well area. So I'll take this piece and you can see what I ended up doing. So if I duplicate shift P, so control D to duplicate and shift P to unparent, you can see what I have here. And I have this where I just kind of, you know, adjusted the positioning slightly and then worked on adding in some detail. So whenever you have this detail here, of a model where you're going from kind of cylindrical into more of a cube like I like to start with this type of detail here where I have a cylinder and then I'll extrude the edges out right that's how I created this during the block out now you can see I kind of you know messed this part up over here but no worries I can just quickly remirror this so I'll select all of these faces here and re-mirror along the x-axis. So if I use object and then x and then positive x with a really low threshold, we're good to go. Okay, I hit Q to exit that. And then I can just grab all these vertices here and just weld these here. All right, so we have something like this. Now, because of the topology here, this is where I, I ended up using a technique that I call just kind of leveraging the existing block out, right? So in some instances, I will model from complete scratch. In other instances, I will reuse the block out, right? So what I ended up doing here is just kind of taking this detail here and I will just delete these edges, okay? Now you wanna make sure to grab the entire edge loop all the way down here. And I'm not too worried about that I missed this so i'll control backspace to delete these edges and let's get rid of these as well like so control backspace and because i'm deleting this bottom side so it's completely fine that you know it didn't mirror over so i'll just merge these like so and just hit g to repeat last all right and then i can grab these faces here and delete them as we need, right? Because this is gonna be kind of open here for this suspension area. So I have something like this, and I think I missed one vertex, so just, you know, hit uh, backspace on your keyboard. And because this detail here, again, is going from cylindrical, and we have this kind of cylindrical extrusion, I'm just gonna do a cylindrical extrusion. We're gonna be really close to the reference, but there might be some differences here. 
you know, I can eventually maybe change this to more of this ellipsoidal extrusion, but for now I'll stick with a nice cylindrical extrusion and circular extrusion. So I will grab these edges now and I will control backspace to delete them and remove them. And I will shift right click and grab my multi-cut tool. And what I'm going to do now is just cut this all the way across like so. So this is a nice instance where I have a nice primitive object that I'm leveraging and using, and I'm not overcomplicating things, right? So I have this all set up, and the key thing is I need this line to be nice and straight, right? Because again, if we take a look at our reference, you can kind of see that it's pretty straight across, and that's what we're going to try to mimic here. So I can then take kind of these interior pieces like so and what I want to do now is you know before I do the extrusion right so if I hit control E to extrude and then offset this is where some good hard surface modeling techniques are going to come in because before I want to do that I don't want to disrupt this part and this holding line, right? Because this is a key form that you're going to need, right? So instead, what I'll do is I'll just kind of grab all of these edges and I can hold tab and kind of marquee select, tab and left click. And then we can offset this with extrude. Just give this a little offset like so. And a small one that I can hold this form with 0.5. And if I grab my multi cut tool again, we can add that other holding line. So we get something like this. We get this nice kind of hard, flat area on the top, but we need to continue that across here. And that's where the offset is pretty nice. So I can grab these edges now. And what I'm gonna do is just control backspace, delete those, and just continue this edge all the way across. You can also, I think in the time lapse that I'll be showing at the end of the video, I ended up just kind of manually cutting that in. So you can use either method. So I can multi-cut this across and there we go. So now you get this nice, clean, flat surface here at the top. And then what I can do is grab these faces here. And again, control E to extrude. I'm going to offset this just a little bit like so. And then what I want to do is I will do another multi-cut and I'm going to use control as I middle mouse click in the middle here. Okay, why am I doing that? It's so it gives us extra topology here to create this circular cutout. I like to use the circularize function. So if I hold shift right click, I can do circularize component like so. And I can bring this down with, with the radial offset. And you get something like that. And you can hit Q to exit the tool. And if we head over to our multi, our modeling toolkit, you can change transform constraint to surface slide, and you can just kind of move this and it'll constrain it to the surface here. So no matter what I do, it'll always keep it flat on this surface. So that's really nice and helps out. And then you can see that we're just gonna make sure this has some nice thickness here. So I will now take this and uh, before I do an extrude down, I will do another offset, right? To kind of hold that form here. Something 0.2 is fine. And then I'll hit G to repeat last and we're just gonna extrude inward. And so there you go. Now I can delete those faces and we're good to go. Now I can multi-cut, kind of add in another holding line and there you go, right? So you get this nice simple form here where you have this kind of you know cylindrical front, the circular, front that goes into more of a cube-like and square-like shape. And we need to make sure we just add one more holding line right about here, because you can see it kind of flattens out here. And then this is kind of coming down at an angle. So that's where I have this at an angle and kind of flattening up at the top. And then I can add in this holding line there. And then this gives us that nice detail there. Okay, so this is working out really well. You can see again, this is very close to what I have here where I have this and then I just did this border edge extrusion. So if I bring that back and I bring back my rep interior, that's where I can add in that multi cut. Very, very simple, very straightforward. So if I cut this and I will move these edges back so they kind of align with the surface here and then 
I will again multi-cut, shift right click multi-cut, we'll bring these edges here and then you can do a nice simple extrusion outwards. So you can either shift right click extrude face or control E, you'll see me use both. And if I can just extrude this out and then I can also give this a nice corner, a nice hard corner. And of course I have to turn off my constraint here. So we get something like this where we get a nice corner and I'll just do that for this side as well. And you can add in the holding lines. I'm moving pretty quick just so you can see the overall workflow and you can see how I'm adding all that. But that's essentially how I did it. And of course, you can see what's happening here is I got these very, very long faces. And when it comes to sub D models, you want an even distribution of edges. So technically, you know, I can go in and add in another edge that goes in across here. And I can use a nice simple, if I grab these lines of edges here, so it doesn't like those overlayered models, I can take these edges here. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to delete this edge here because this is intersecting and I no longer need this. And that should be fine. I can leave kind of that thickness there. And I can grab these edges and just do a connect. So we get something like this. All right. And by the way, I should say that the default connect is one. So if you see if I connect, middle mouse drag that. I don't want to forget that. So if you start with one, middle mouse drag to the right, and you can add in a few more segments. So it's a nice way to add in some more segments. So we get this nice sub D model. All right. And then, so this was a good example of kind of leveraging and using existing geometry. If I go to the wheel well here, you can see that it's quite a bit different from the block out here, right? So if I grab this part one block out again, you can see, let me find that piece here real quick. Okay, there we go, got it. You can see that it's kind of this really sloppy piece here, right? And I just use this from an, the existing blackout and under body of the vehicle. So I didn't really want to use this. I didn't want to have to worry about evening out these edges and whatnot. So this is an example where I just didn't even use the block out, but it was good to have that here to really help and understand where I should be adding the next piece. And this next piece, again, is very simple. So I'll hide that other object and I'll just grab a cylinder. And what I'll do is kind of put that in position. Actually, before I do that is I'll grab, you know, again, I'll create a cylinder. So let me deselect, shift right click with nothing selected, create a cylinder, grab the wheel well ref here. And this is where I can grab my cylinder here. So there's my origin and rotate this 90 degrees. So if you increase the size of this, so we can actually see it relative to everything, something like this and E to rotate. And if you hold J for snapping, you can just snap it 90 degrees. Normally I would just kind of manually move it type in 90 here, but thanks to a couple of you guys in the YouTube comments, you let me know that, hey, you can just hold J for snapping anytime you want, which is super nice. So thank you for that. And now I can put this in position here, just kind of similar to how I did this originally for the exterior. And I can set this to actually 32 segments, increase the radius quite a bit. So it matches kind of with this top original piece. And we'll continue continue to increase that to right about this bottom edge or this middle piece of the edge here is about the thickness of the entire thing. So we get something like that. And if I increase the radius just a little bit more, we can put that in position and increase the height or excuse me, yeah, the height, there we go. And we get something like that. Now, in this instance, I'm going to just grab the bottom half of this model, like so. Grab any other of these faces, delete that, because I no longer need that, and delete the back sides, right? Because remember, I have a full exterior that's looking on the outside, right? So I want to delete that. Now I have this, and this is kind of where I ended up. I, of course, can bring these faces in that more closely matches the block out, right? That's the nice thing about having the block out, right? Is I don't have to worry about knowing where this goes. So 
I can hide this piece and we can see pretty easily where I ended up where, you know, I'm just kind of taking these pieces here and I ended up, let's say, just taking these pieces, these edges at the bottom and just hold grabbing the move tool, hold shift and just extrude like so. So you get this nice piece here uh, if you need that for the bottom of this, because now this kind of angles up like so, and this angles uh, needs to come up. And I can worry about, you know, cleaning that up. I ended up cleaning these edges and I'll just move these and you can hold control shift to kind of edge slide those. So it follows that and that'll work for now. Okay. And pretty simple here. It's like grab these edges. I do a nice simple bevel with a very large offset, right? Because again, what are we looking at here? We're looking at this reference here and we can see these pieces on the wheel well. We don't have many angles of it, but it's nice and round and it conforms to the wheel. All right. So I'm going to increase the segment by two again. So it stays nice and round. And I did the same thing as last time is I just did a simple extrusion here where I just add in a couple of edges and then extrude that to come off, right? I'll probably move this closer. I'll control backspace, move that and just put that kind of right behind it and just extrude this out. So we get something like this. And this is a very simple shape and this will work fine for what we're trying to do. And you can kind of see now how I'm just, you know, I created this new piece here. So I'm just moving on to the next piece that I did. Oh, by the way, I created this top piece here by just grabbing these faces here and duplicating them and extruding them. And I, you, you'll see that in the time lapse, but I'll move on to the next piece here where we have this rear hatch here. So you can see in this instance, I just took the block out and then kind of worked from there. The other thing is that the, the, luckily there's this natural seam here like here across here and you can actually see all these tiny little like they're like these little pits here right that's just welding between all of these pieces and that's going to add a nice level of detail to the model for sure and i plan to you know ultimately add that type of detail to the model and the good thing is if we have clean topology and clean edges you know adding these is going to be a pretty simple process kind of like almost adding like stitching to a seat or stitching to uh, any object. And we can use something like mash or some sort of duplication script in order to do that. Okay. But next you can see again, these, these two pieces here, once I have these, I can separate them out. So if I go back to the original piece, this block out that we had, and I duplicate control D shift P to unparent. And the first thing that I do, one of the big techniques that I like to explain to people is if you can where applicable model things the way things are made in real life meaning that if there's this natural seam here have that natural seam on your models and that's going to make things a lot easier so if i select this edge here hold shift right click and detach now i can separate this face here so i can extract these faces delete history and then i can just go through the process of now adding in the detail here. I believe this should be symmetrical. Let me double check. So if I set symmetry to world Z, I should, yeah, I should be able to model that with symmetry on. Because what I want to do is just select these faces, delete them. And now I don't have to worry about making sure that the topology matches between this piece and this piece, right? Because again, they're separate pieces that are joined through welding, right? Sometimes things are a little bit more complicated with cast molding, but for the most part, you can keep things modular and separate, which is gonna make your life way, way easier. And again, if we look at our reference here, you can kind of see the level of detail here. And what I ended up doing to start is, you know, taking this piece here, doing a bevel with, you know, bring that reel down like maybe 0 .0, 0 0.025, and then I'll add two segments. So now we have a new line of symmetry here, and this is gonna allow me to you know, go through, right? So now this is another instance where I'm taking existing geometry like this from the block out, 
and model, you know, modeling and refining it instead of starting from scratch. So a lot of times, you know, you'll, again, just make those calls as you go and whatever you're more comfortable with, right? So I can bring these in to roughly about the same size that I had, looking at my, paying attention to my reference and moving these in. And I can, you know, add in some edges here. You can see that if I go to my reference, there's this nice extrusion here. So you can, you know, hold control with multi-cut tool, click in to add that. And then I can just move this edge up. So if I hold shift and just move this straight up like so, and you can see that, you know, in the reference, it kind of tapers a bit. So I did this in the video, in the time-lapse with just extrude and offset, but I like to show different ways of doing the same thing. So now I can just, you know, move and Again, I'm holding Control Shift, middle mouse dragging to edge slide. So I'm creating this natural taper here on our model, okay? And you can see, if I go back to the reference, there's this kind of like double extrusion. So it kind of extrudes a little bit, offsets in, insets in, and then kind of gets a little bit of this lip. So I'm going to make sure that I have that, right? I'm gonna move the reference here on the right so, we can see, uh, so I can see that as I'm modeling. So if I, fill hole now so if i select you can simply select an edge and do fill hole and what i want to do is grab this and i'm going to scale this up just a little bit so i have a little bit more room to work with maybe just do something like this Control e to extrude do a little offset okay because i want this edge i want this protective edge here so i'm going to leave that there so i'm going to extrude now this piece right and this now is going to give me this lip right here. So I'm going to now just hit G to repeat last and just kind of bring that down like so. Okay. And you can bring this down. You know, we're not working with perfect measurements, but I'll bring it probably 0.5, which is, you know, 0.5 centimeter. And I can hit G again to offset that. And I can, you see how I'm bringing that in now. And then I'll probably bring that in, you know, maybe another 0.5 and hit G again and just extrude that down just because we want this little bit of a thickness. When it comes to CG, you see it's really, really subtle. I'm talking about this here, right? The last thing we'd want to do is like if you leave this like this and just and delete not have those faces, that's a big tell that it's fake and CG, right? So instead, if I just give this a really, really small thickness, even if I bring this up even more, that's going to give us some nice detail here. Of course, I keep looking with smooth preview with three on my keyboard. So now I need to add in some holding lines to retain this original form. So I'll hold control shift or excuse me, shift right click. Sorry, not control shift. So shift right click, multi cut. And I can start now to add in these edges. So I'm going to control middle mouse, control middle mouse. And you see it adds it perfectly in the center. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Control middle mouse, control middle mouse, click. So control middle mouse one and click, control middle mouse one and click. And I'm going to do the same thing here is just kind of add in these edges like so. Or you can use connect, whichever one you prefer. If you want it to be perfect, I definitely would use connect. But this gives us something like this. And you know, now we have some edges to play with that can hold the original form. You know, with the uh, other one, this is where I ended up with, you know, it's just kind of having these two edges in the middle and three edges to kind of hold that form there. Okay. Now for these edges, I'd say I'd probably want to bring these in. So these are just our holding lines. So if you see, oops, let me undo that so you can kind of see what I'm doing, right? So if I hold three or press three on my keyboard, control shift, middle mouse drag, you can and you can start to see I'm edge sliding. You can start to see how that's changing the radius, right? Like I don't need middle mouse drag or edge slide. I can just do this since this is planar. You can start to see how it. I can tighten this a lot. If I wanted a tighter corner where these edges now are very tight against this, or I can bring these more towards the center here. And I like to have these two edges here that's gonna help control the radius of this corner now if you want you can kind of scale these where by holding control shift and scaling in the x-axis and you can see how that makes that pretty planar right and so you get something like this and 
it can kind of help control the overall form. And if you want these to be even on these sides, then same thing, select these edges, hold control shift and kind of scale, All right? So we're just, I'm just going over just some basic modeling techniques that I've covered before. But well, hopefully this is, you know, would be very helpful. And you can see where this is applicable, right? And then this here, this middle piece, pretty simple. I'm just gonna now add in some holding lines here, here. And what I want to do is add in another one that kind of runs around. And because this is flat, you know, this is nice and simple. You know, I can, you know, add in another edge like this to hold that form, okay? So this is all good and gives me the detail that I need. I can maybe clean up this topology a little bit for the corners, but for now I'm gonna leave it as is so we can kind of keep moving. And you can kind of see how I did things a little bit differently, but overall it's pretty much the same, okay? So I have these pieces and then for this center piece here, you know, I ended up just taking this existing piece and just kind of cleaning up the topology right that i have here and then from that it's this is again the very very similar workflow that i used for this but even simpler right because what i ended up doing is taking these i ended up you know like removing these edges here yeah i can just do this on this one this is fine removing these edges here and then just manually cutting them across, right? So these ones should be, I think I need to turn off symmetry. Sometimes symmetry gets a little bit weird. These faces are being stubborn and doesn't want to delete. So if that happens, no big deal. You can just grab your multi-cut tool and just cut across. Because I don't think that it likes the fact that, you know, these faces are causing all sorts of issues. So I'll just straight up delete this. You know, if my just is stubborn sometimes, that's kind of what, what, what you can do. And before I can do anything else, you know, I would have to, let's see, let me just undo that a little bit. Let me actually undo back and reset real quick. The first thing that I want to do is make sure these two pieces are detached like I did earlier. And you'll notice in the reference that this is not on the line of symmetry. So I have to kind of offset and move this. So I ended up doing that first. So if I move this over now, you can kind of oh, turn off the world symmetry. I'm just going to move this off like so. And we're going to have to do this without symmetry, which is fine. And I can move these edges. Control shift middle mouse edge. And what you can do is you can do this in kind of any order. You can cut this across, you know, like so. And we're just cleaning this up now, right? So I can select this middle edge here, making sure that I retain the original cylindrical form. And you can see how I am cleaning that up, right? And so this is just a little bit more manual, but it's allowing me to utilize the existing form in the existing shape. So it's completely fine, whichever order that you want to do. But that's how I ended up with this. So you can see how you can use existing geometry to clean that up. I'm not going to do the whole thing because this is a pretty simple shape with a cylindrical extrusion. And if I head back in Control-1, head back to uh, standard modeling here so we have more real estate, you can see you know, where we are. Right. So once I clean that up, then I just do the extrusion and then I make sure that I have this lip and line between these two pieces that has a nice holding line. And again, the really, really nice thing is I don't have to worry about this topology and edge flow of this top piece coming down here. OK, so it's just a nice, simple way of adding detail and whatnot. All right. Now, the last thing I did here was pretty easy. I'll leave this for the time lapse, but I ended up just using or taking this piece here that I had as a cube and kind of a tapered cube and adding some edges, extruding that. So you'll see that in the time lapse. Very simple. And then the last thing that I did was starting to add in the roll cage. OK, and the first thing that I did was make sure that I have this 
it's about the width or the radius of this is about the size of the kind of the, the pillar here, uh, the A pillar of the car. So I'm looking at reference and I have, you know, a lot of shots. I don't have every shot perfectly, but this gives me really good reference here to work with. And for right now, I just wanted to focus on blocking this in. So you can see it's pretty straightforward and it has some asymmetrical details. And, you know, I'm going to combine all of these. I won't be doing that in that video, but I do have like an example where, you know, you it shows kind of how you can simply do that, where you're taking two cylinders and I Boolean them together and then did a simple merge, right? So I can do that real quick to show you. So if I grab this cylinder here, I'm going to just increase the height and I'm gonna hide this one, stay on the line of symmetry. I'll hit Control D to duplicate and hold J to snap until I get 90 degrees. So you get something like this. And what I want is, you know, this to be pretty close to lined up because I want to take, if I hit insert to move the pivot and hold V and snap it to the very bottom of this cylinder. Now, you know, I can grab an edge here and hold control and about get it about centered here. Now, the nice thing is I can center this. Like if I didn't have the grid here, I can hold V again and snap it to this center edge. I'm actually going to turn off the grid so it's not in the way. There we go. So I have this. So now I can re-snap this cylinder back to this cylinder using this vertice here in the middle. So there you go. You see how that's nearly, this is perfect now, perfectly snapped. So it's going to make our Boolean or our merging these assets a lot easier. And then I can just kind of add in a couple of edges here. And now what I want to do is just simply add in edges that are aligned based off of these intersections here. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, there we go. Now the key trick here is to make sure that if you have an edge here and you want it to snap to this edge, then just hold V and make sure that you're snapping to that vertice because that's V is for vertex snap here. So you can snap it there and you have this. So now what I can do is just select both of these and do a simple Boolean. And because I prepared the geometry, this should work fine. And there we go. So that allows me to combine and Boolean that. And if I hit three, Looks like a mess, no big deal. And I wanna make sure to select all of these vertices now and con or hold shift, right click, and we're gonna do a merge vertices, merge vertices. And there we go. And what you can do now is select these edges. So you have to manually select it because it's not a perfect edge here because they're triangles and this is completely fine. And this is also why I used a little bit higher edge or segment cylinder. So it's gonna help reduce the artifacts here. So if I hold shift right click, bevel edge, and then I wanna make sure chamfer's off. So it maintains the original form. So with chamfer on, you can see what it does with two segments. It kind of uh, gives it a nice radius, but I don't want that. So I'm gonna leave that like this. And there you go. Look at that. Very clean. Nice way to do that. And, you know, we're, I'm going to eventually do that through the rest of these. So, you know, I'll make sure to capture that and time lapse that and whatnot. So you can understand that workflow in practice. OK, and the final thing I want to show you, if you're interested in kind of more of the Boolean workflow or using the how to make pipes in you know, essentially roll cages. I have a couple of videos on how to create these nice simple pipes here. So I go through that in pretty good detail. And then I also have this here with um, some Booleans and how to prepare geometry for, for Boolean. So all that's there. So you have that. Okay, so that is everything I wanted to cover today. That's where I ended up where I'm at. And I'm going to continue to document the process. You know, I don't want to put too much in a single video. And I'm, you know, doing this as I go. So I'm modeling the vehicle, capturing the process, and then I'm creating these videos for everybody to kind of understand the, the workflow and practice. So, you know, I'll keep moving forward. 
on modeling the interior and I will post that on the YouTube channel. So make sure to, you know, subscribe for, for more updates and I will leave off the video with the time lapses so you can kind of see how I did everything from beginning to end in a sped up time lapse. So if you enjoyed that, make sure to give me a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Take care.